The name of this video is Photoshop in Blender Part 2 Transparency. In Part 1 of the Photoshop in Blender tutorial series, I introduce you to Blender's Compositor Node setup. In this tutorial, we're going to combine an image that I took with my digital camera, an antique Vermont Railway locomotive displayed at the White River Junction, Vermont Railroad Station, with Suzanne in front of it. You're looking at the final result. We'll discover how transparency works in Blender and why understanding and controlling image transparency and the concept of an alpha channel, which is crucial in combining images in the compositor. We'll also pretend that we're creating this image for HDTV. In this case, the resolution of the image I took was 2,592 by 1,944 pixels. Actually, when the video is edited, it's basically a sequence of images. Each image is called a frame. So we're just editing one video frame. In later tutorials, I'll show you how to edit videos with full motion, but that's getting ahead of our story. In this tutorial, I will introduce a number of composite nodes, the viewer node, the mix node, the alpha over node, and the scale node, to accomplish the job. I hope you'll become more comfortable with using Blender's composite nodes after watching this tutorial. So let's get started. Before going into the compositor, I'll delete the default cube and add Suzanne. I'll bring up the tool shelf, check Align to View so she faces the camera, smooth her, add a subdivision surface modifier at level 3, and give her a blue material. This is not necessary to our story, but we do want Suzanne to look presentable. Now I'll switch to the composite setup and check Use Nodes. I first want to show you how Blender represents transparency. I'll render the scene, just the blue Suzanne. Suzanne is rendered with all sorts of channels. The channel that controls transparency is called the alpha channel. On a pixel by pixel basis, the pixel's alpha has a value between 0 and 1. If the pixel's alpha is 0, it's fully transparent. If the pixel's alpha is 1, it's fully opaque. Any number in between 0 and 1 represents partial transparency. It's the pixel's alpha that's used when images are combined, as we're going to do in this exercise. We can take a picture of the alpha channel. The compositor has a node called a viewer node that lets you see an image any intermediate step of the compositing. The viewer node is an output node. I'll add the viewer node by pressing Shift A, Output Viewer. To take a picture of the transparency, I will connect the alpha channel socket of the render layer, called alpha, to the image socket of the viewer node. Note that the monkey's profile is all white and the surrounding area is all black. Only the white area, Suzanne, will be composited. The surrounding area is black and will not be included in the composite result. Now I'll add the locomotive image. Shift A, input image. Let's see what the alpha channel looks like for the locomotive. I could have used the menu to add a viewer node, but instead I'll right click on Suzanne's viewer node press Shift D to duplicate the node, and drag the node down so we can see it. Then I'll connect the locomotive's alpha channel socket to the new viewer node's image socket. Note that the locomotive's viewer node is all white. This means that the compositor will show the entire image when it's combined. There's no way of indicating what areas are transparent. It's an all or none process. There are a number of ways of combining images in the compositor. The most common is called the Mix node, which gives a basic image combined by default, although it actually has a lot of options. I'll add a Mix node, Shift A, Color, Mix. Note that the Mix node has two image sockets for input. I'll connect Suzanne to the top image socket and the locomotive to the bottom image socket. Then I'll connect the Mix output image socket to the composite node. Note that the locomotive displays only. What kind of combine is that? The answer? The percentage of mixing is controlled by the FAC, or factor socket, which processes values between 0 and 1 as a percentage. A value of 1 will output just the locomotive, and a value of 0 will just output Suzanne. A value of 0.5 outputs half locomotive, half Suzanne, and so on. Let's look at the half and half result. It's not what we want. We don't want any of the locomotive pixels behind Suzanne. We only want the full Suzanne. Although the mix node has many options, as you can see from the drop-down, things like add, dodge, burn, and overlay that you've probably seen if you use the GIMP or Photoshop, we can't get the effect we want with it. However, there is another node that will do the trick. 
the alpha overlay or alpha over node. I'll delete the mix node, right click and delete. Then I'll add the alpha over node, shift A color alpha over. I'll connect Suzanne to the top image socket and the locomotive to the bottom image socket as before. The result is the same as with the mix node. That's because alpha over combines the top image with the bottom image based on the alpha channel of the bottom image. Unfortunately, the bottom image, the locomotive, has no alpha channel. I'll reverse the connection, connecting the locomotive to the top image socket and Suzanne to the bottom image socket. To do that, I'll left click and drag the two existing connections while holding the control key down to delete the existing connections. Then I'll reconnect the images the way I want. Now all of Suzanne's pixels display as if she's in front of the locomotive. There's still a problem. Not all the locomotive displays. We need to scale the locomotive image down so all of it fits. Fortunately, the compositor has a scale node. I'll add a scale node, Shift A, Distort, Scale. I'll connect the locomotive image to the scale node and the scale node to the image socket of the alpha over node. By default, the scaling is done as a percentage of the width, x, and the height, y. If you don't want any distortion, you'll need to scale in the same proportion as the original image. In this case, a 2592 by 1944 pixel image, the proportion, technically called the aspect ratio, is 4 to 3. So I'll scale the image down 40% of its original width and the height to 30% of its original width. There's another common way to use the scale node, and that's the absolute option. I'll select absolute from the drop-down. In this case, the image is scaled using a rectangle whose center is the original image's center and whose dimensions are the number of pixels specified in the X and Y sliders. I'll scale the image to an 800 by 600 pixel size in that way. That way there's no distortion. As a video editor, you might be outputting video for all sorts of purposes, such as HDTV, non-HDTV, European TV, and so on. This could get confusing because the dimensions are different for these different purposes. Fortunately, the Render Properties has a Dimensions panel, which contains presets for these different outputs. For non-HD TV in the USA and Latin America, the standard is NTSC with a 4 to 3 aspect ratio. For HD TV in the USA, the standard is NTSC with a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. The Render Dimension presets cover the most common video formats, including the frame rate, the number of frames per second. The European standard, for example, is PAL. So set the dimension preset to whatever you need. To save the frame, just press F3. You might ask, why didn't the original image have an alpha channel? The answer is that the original image is a JPEG image, which is pretty common in retail digital cameras. JPEG images do not have an alpha channel. How do I do the opposite? Add the locomotive without its background to the blender scene. That will be the topic of my next tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this Photoshop and Blender episode. See you in the next tutorial. Happy blendering!